Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and I just want to show you um, this lock. It's, it really is my nemesis. It's a cheap um, four dial combination lock. It, it costs about four pounds. It's Chinese made. Um, I don't think it's made even particularly well. I mean, uh, just, just look at, uh, just look here, this is kind of a, a sloppy tolerances. But I'll tell you what, I've tried everything to try and uh, decode this lock. I've used um, shims uh, in in the, in the dials, trying to feel for any um, anything in particular, which gives me an idea about where a gate is. Can't do that doesn't give you any feedback. Um, I've tried tensioning the shackle, um, but they just bind these just bind up, and then um, there's false gates in every single wheel. And then again, this binds up, so you've got to put it in. And then I can't feel the difference between the false gates and the real gates either. Um, it's the most frustrating thing. You would not expect um, a, a lock this crappy. Um, and I really mean that. I mean, just just look at the kind of like blemishes on the surface. Um, it's, uh, it's it's made of cheap metal. I don't think it's stainless steel. It's it's coated in something shiny, but that's about it. I mean, you could. You could get into this really easy, but the annoying thing is, is that the the actual combination mechanism seems to be uh, annoyingly tight. Um, and I've been going around trying to figure out how to do this. Um, I've tried pushing on the shackle, pulling on the shackle, going, uh, trying to feel the tension as we go along, trying to feel the difference between gates. I just couldn't do it, and it's really frustrating when you know that you could probably just you know pull the shackle apart with your hands because it's made so badly that you can't actually decode the damn lock. But there you go. That's that's where we are. Um, so I've mulled it over for a while, and if you've got one like this, maybe you could try this trick too. So this is a, um, a bobby pin or a, a hair clip, and all I've done is I've scraped off the uh, sort of plastic protective end, which you can see here on this side. I've made a basically a, a nice thin piece of metal, which is long enough to slide down here. So. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is it's just another technique that you might just want to hold in your arsenal um, in terms of decoding uh, combination locks if they're not working out for you. Uh, I just happen to have experimented a lot with this one. I know that this technique does work for this type of lock. Okay, what works well for this technique is the fact that the manufacturing tolerances are so poor. I don't know if I get a good focus on that for you, but just look here. You can't shim this because the, the mechanism doesn't have a locking um, pole here. It actually locks the uh, um, the shaft within the uh, core mechanism here. However, whilst they've guarded the um, shackle entry points there and uh, can you see there with a piece of metal, I can't get this in. The, the tolerances of this lock are so sloppy, I can actually get a feeler gauge, if you want to call it that, down beside the shackle here. So let's have a go. Um, just just push the shackle out of the way and slide it in. Just try not to bend it. Um, I think this is the right thickness. It's, it's thick enough that it's uh, it can be pushed down, but not so thick the term. Um, You can't get it into the locks, I can't get in there. Two seconds. There we go. Got it in. So what you're doing is you need to push this down until it hits um the the, the first wheel here. So I'm just gonna set the by the way the, the combination um I'm not gonna light it, it's it's um uh zero 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 but I'm just gonna set it to something about seven 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 here. Okay, so um, you can see that this is all on fives, or between four and five, so that isn't going to open. Um, this side, I've just got all sevens, and I'm pushing my feeler gauge straight down the shackle, and it stops. And all you do is you just keep turning the dial until the, the gauge slips down a gap.
I reach around the camera here to get more comfortable. There we go. Make sure it's in camera shot. Let's try again. So. Slide it down the chuckle until you can. That's it. Now I can feel I've hit the um, the first wheel. That's it. Keep turning. Ah, oh, perfect. There you go. I don't know if you saw. Just moved in a notch. Leave it there. Turn the next one. That's moved. Okay. Next one. Move that back a bit. Move, move these back. Sort of stuck there, that's sort of stuck there. That's, ah, there we go. I've got movement down the lock now. I, I that overset this dial a bit. Okay, I think then I must be. Um, yeah, that's nice and smooth. Sometimes I think you can over, you overdo it, it slides in, then you overdo it. So just pull it back until it, um, it stops on that bar. It seems to be all fives really. But I'm going to just slide this out. Slide this out. Keep my thumb there and just see how deep it is. So there's the top of the lock. So you can see that I must be resting on that last wheel. Um, so we'll put that in now. We'll try to get it in. It should, in theory, slide all the way back down, I hope. So it's obviously the mechanism in here is sort of the reason why you don't feel anything on the outside is that um, the, the mechanism for moving the shuttle up and down through the gate is is on the inside of the core. Um, one day I might buy another one of these and just like smash it apart and see what's actually happening. So I must be resting on the centre of that last wheel. Um, there we go. And let's see what we're at. Oh. There we go. Do you see that slide down at the top again? Now, interestingly, you can move these wheels quite considerably around. Uh, they're quite sloppy around. That. They bind because obviously there's a piece of metal stopping it from rotating around now. But they do um, go from, I don't know, say 7 to 5. So there's a, a big amount of sloppiness. But what I've said is, uh, what I've found is you just move, gently move it to where it seems to bind. Um, uh, to, you know, rotating towards you, uh, where it doesn't go anymore. So it seems to be set nicely um, about about that. And uh, and I said so. You can. It doesn't want to move any further than that. It moves a little bit further, but not a lot. I, um, so that seems to be settled. I suppose you could do the other way, couldn't you? See where where it rotates to m maximally. The other side of the of that of the gate, I guess, seems to be yeah about there. So, not quite on this first one, is it? Not quite lined up. But you're getting the impression that it's it's some gate around, or sixes, or fives, or seven. So, I think that you at that point you just assume that um, you just need to line up one of those sets of numbers, and then rotate the lock uh, forwards. So you can take that out now. And rotate the lock forwards one number at a time, just gently pulling on the shackle. So uh, going to three, going to two, and going to one. Ah, I'm getting a bit of resistance there. Um, there we go. And then finally zero, and it should pop open now. There we go. So we've got some open. So um, I don't know if you've got a, a, a cheap, but um, bizarrely annoying Chinese four dial combination padlock um, that you can't open like me but if you do then you might want to try this sort of feeler gauge attack um, by going down beside the shackle I can imagine if this has had tighter manufacturing tolerances and I couldn't like get my fingernail in um, here or it was riveted a little bit better then um, I wouldn't even be able to do this attack and uh, the only way I'd be able to get in here is with a hammer I imagine anyway it's just another Another thing you might want to try with some of your locks. Okay, see you next time.